So are you someone who trades indicators? Have you ever heard of the Chaikin Money Flow Indicator? No problem if not, because by the end of this video, you're going to be clued up about this fantastic trading indicator that can be used as a great weapon in your trading analysis. Hi everyone, Connor Woods here, market coach at Forex Signals and HowToTrade.com. Welcome back to the channel, where in today's video, I'm going to dive into an exciting and powerful trading indicator that can help you navigate the markets more confidently and precisely. The Chaikin Money Flow Indicator, or the CMF Indicator. I'll take a deep dive into what the CMF Indicator is, how it works, and how you can use it effectively to make more informed trading decisions. So, let's get started. Head up to Indicators at the top here, and we're just gonna type in Chaikin, and then we've got the Chaikin Money Flow Indicator. That's the one we're gonna be discussing today. Set period is the standard is 20. That's what it's set to. You can change the length. We're gonna keep it the same. Obviously, if you go over to Style, you can then change the colors. Um, you can do anything you want with it to customize it to yourself. We're just gonna leave it exactly the same, and then we're gonna explain what this is all about. So the Chaikin Money Flow Indicator, or the CMF Indicator, was developed by a financial expert called Mark Chaikin. It's a powerful tool used in trading to really gauge the flow of money in and out of a financial asset. This indicator, therefore, is a volume-weighted average indicator that assesses the accumulation and distribution of assets over a specified period, which, as we spoke about, is that 20 level here. This really presents traders with, I think, quite a dynamic tool to assess trends and then potential reverses um, in the market as well. What it is, it's like a, a money flow oscillator, so a bit like an RSI indicator, but it ranges between the levels of actually one and minus one. It actually goes, you can see quite a lot. However, in order for it to reach levels of one and minus one, there would need to be 20 consecutive closes at the high or low respectively over a 20 period like we've got here. Therefore, what we get is the CMF actually fluctuates between minus 0.5 and plus 0.5. And that central point is that zero level here. But the most important thing to understand is positive and negative flow. And it's really, really simple. Positive CMF flow. That's when the checking money flow moves into positive territory, i.e. above the zero line like we've got here. And it signals buying pressure in the market. This then suggests obviously a positive money flow, potentially indicating a current uptrend, which we can marry up with, with, the, uh, with the price action above. Traders often view positive CMF as a confirmation of an ongoing uptrend. Negative CMF, that's where we get the checking money flow indicator moving into negative territory, i.e. below the zero line like this, for example, you can see lots of examples. This means there's an increased negative money flow, which may cast doubt on the strength of an uptrend a negative CMF can be seen as a reversal signal leading to a downtrend. Okay, so there are a couple of ways you can use it. In terms of actually a trading strategy, use it in conjunction with some moving average crossovers. So what I've got here up the top is 250 and 100 days simple moving averages. And we're looking for either the death crossover or the golden crossover. The death crossover is like the example we've got here. So we've got the lower time frame or the lower period moving average, the 50 crossing over and below the 100 and the 200. And then for the golden crossover would be the opposite. So that 50 crossing over and above. We marry that up with the checking money flow. So what we're looking for, as you can see, we've got the death crossover here. We're then looking to sell as soon as we get the next close or the next crossover over this um, zero level here on the checking money flow. You can see around this area where we've got this first candle down, we've got that sort of, and remember this is lagging as well. So we'd have to, you know, be honest about where we look to look to actually get into the market here, maybe around somewhere around at the close of this candle or the retest here. Um, but anytime we get that crossover is when we look to try and short. OK, so we've got that crossover there. That's our indication that we're looking to sell this market. We had a short position. Let's be conservative and say, OK, it's a lagging indicator. Therefore, we're probably only going to get this. And then what we can do is we can target maybe um, lows along the way or we can target two or three to one, for example. So say we're targeting two to one as our risk reward uh, strategy. Our stop loss is always just above where those moving averages are because we get a close back above, then we know potentially that we're going to be going uh, bullish again. So we've got a good stop loss in there just above the moving averages for selling. If we was buying just below the moving averages and if we just let that pl uh, trade play through just a little bit, you can see that the checking money flow in conjunction with the death crossover, there we go, we've got a retest here. Let me just pause that, move that across. 
you can see that we hit our two to one target. You can actually see that it did go on to, to have a bit more. Now, what some people can do um, is people use it as well as an exit strategy. So if for whatever reason you was long in the market, say you was long in the market um, at this crossover, you know, really, really simple. You was long in the market for whatever reason, doesn't actually matter. But people then use the next crossover as an exit strategy. So exit trade here. So let's say, for example, you sold here. Oh, sorry, you bought here because it was a crossover into positive flow. And you'd exit the trade as soon as we got that close back below. Now, people can use that potentially as scalping. So you can keep, you know, I'd buy there. I'd exit my trade there and sell. Then I'd buy here exit the trade here and sell. Obviously, it does give out full signals, but that can be a way people use it as well. So number one is that we use it in conjunction with moving average crossovers. And number two is that we use it for our exit strategy, i.e. when to take profits on trade, i.e. if we were buying the market and we cross over into negative territory, we start to cash in our longs and then vice versa um, for any shorts. And there you have it, the check in money flow indicator broken down. It is certainly a unique indicator, it may not be for everyone, as it is hard to be solely dependent on it. However, as an extra confluence for your trade analysis, it's a no-brainer with its ability to determine bullish and bearish flow, which is a benefit for any trader. Go and give it a go. Journal your trades with it and see if it boosts your profitability. Now, we have an excellent and simple trading journal that you can download in the trading room, and there's a 30-day free trial at the moment, so go and check out www howtotrade.com. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more insights into the world of finance and trading. Feel free to comment below as well with your thoughts and questions. And until next time, trade well, and we'll see you on our next live stream.